It's printmaking week! Printmaking week! Oh, potato! It's printmaking week! No, don't do that. Don't bark. The executive needs to be in his chair. Now you need to shut your little mouth. Yes, you do. It's printmaking week. It's printmaking week, baby! We're just two cowboys out in the desert. Baby, it's print making week. It's the week to make prints. I feel like that's good. I feel like I'm doing a great job. Rolling. We're about to watch a full week of printmaking. I'm filming this after the week's already through. This is so stupid. And this is the part in the movie where the, she throws the script and then says something heartfelt. Or in my case, ooh, sale. What did somebody buy? Thank you so much, Carola. What you need to know before we get started is that I did this project with my buddy Sarah. We decided to spend one dedicated week learning a new skill, and what is that skill class? It's printmaking! That's right, printmaking. I don't know if I'm in the shop. This is actually a really relevant way to intro a printmaking video, because this design is reverse. And if you know, you know. That's part of printmaking, is like reversing an image, but then also like mentally trying to figure out which way it goes, and then inevitably getting it wrong and spending an entire time carving a block that you then can't use for fun. So let's get started on day one of a week of learning how to print make from scratch. I have, so I have some of the supplies to work with, but I don't actually have any ideas. You know those things that you need to, in order to make art? I don't got those. It was raining all morning and then the minute I just, the minute I decided to record it was like, you know what Bryn? It's my time to shine. I have a platypus that people loved it. I posted it on Instagram and so many of you guys responded and were like, this is great. So. I will likely do something with this platypus. I also like this one that's just like, ah! Like imagine if you were a platypus. It'd be the shock of a lifetime, I think. I've also been in an intense goblin phase because I've been feeling very much like a goblin person myself. So I've been doing a bunch of goblin stuff. That is another idea I might have. And then Mothman. And then there's the classic pony idea because we all know ponies. Those are things. Step one, we gotta come up with some ideas. Step two, we're gonna come up with the design. Step three, transfer it onto the linoleum block. I don't know what step we're on. Step four, start cutting and just hope for the best. Cross all your hands. Step five, test a printout. Step six, make all the prints. Step five, profit. So follow me on this journey. I'm gonna start um, coming up with some ideas and I'll show you what I have in the end. That's where you want to be, is back there. I've been sketching thumbnails for a little bit. I'm having a hard time visualizing how to design art that is going to become a print block. I don't think that you can design a print block easily with pencil on paper. For the past six months or so, I feel like I have had so much growth with my drawing style since doing traditional sketching versus an iPad. It has really helped me, but in this case, it seems not helpful whatsoever. Because so much of printmaking is, it's removing material. And so like drawing something and not being able to easily remove bits of my drawing so that I can see what would it look like like this? What would I look like if I pulled color away here? You can't see it. So um, I'm gonna switch to my iPad. Could it be where I do the love? Maybe I'm just a fool for love. I'm just a fool for love And you think you're too cool for love Took different lighting, pictures in different lightings I'm watching the Amber Heard Johnny trial I know it, I know it's so gross I am a gross lady so I drew for a couple of hours on the phone with Sarah and we talked about our printmaking projects and I really thought I was gonna make this Mothman. But I started flipping through my sketchbook and this throwaway drawing of a goblin just caught my freaking eye and I was like, that's you. That's you, baby. You're from me. I'm gonna make you. Anyways, um, 
It just hit different. That's why it's so important to have a sketchbook just filled with stupid ass doodles. You never know what stupid ass doodle will become something cool. I sketched the drawing up brand new, printed it out, and made sure that it fit on my block. I sent in my block and then painted it red so that when I carved into it, I could see the contrasts of the areas that I'd carved and not carved. I'm truly not sure how many of these techniques are helpful. And even if I didn't know what was happening, I was having a good time and that's all that matters. I was just looking up how to transfer this design onto my block and I got the wrong glue. I bought Elmer's glue when I need Mod Podge. I thought I had Mod Podge, but I can't find it. And she will go on to regret this decision. It's not the right glue, but it's what I'm gonna do. We're just gonna go for it. I'm not confident but if this doesn't work, then tomorrow I'm going to a proper art supply store uh, with my buddy Ellen. I'm gonna leave it in the sun and hopefully it dries quickly because I'm very eager to start carving. She would absolutely not carve on this day. <laughs> I wanna do it now. No! Oh man, that didn't work. Hey, so uh, I gotta go to an art supply store. I bungled it. <laughs> hey, uh, washable water water glue. Apparently, who, who knew? You put water on it, it doesn't hold anymore. A classic Brinny bungle, if I ever heard of one. So we got the Mod Podge. I actually ended up talking to Steph who goes by Cheers Thanks a lot on Instagram. She's an incredible real-time printmaker. She offered a ton of advice. It's her transfer method that I'm attempting to use here. And she said that once you have it glued, you have to wait for it to completely dry before adding water. And then you need to use the tiniest amount of water, just a finger of water. And just don't douse it under the sink like I did, like an idiot. Now we wait. It's working, it's working, it's working, it's working. Sarah was like, I keep trying to do this and it doesn't work. And it's working, can you see? Can you see that it's working? I know I didn't explain this very well, but basically what you do in this transfer method is you glue a printout of your drawing using Mod Podge, not Elmer's glue, onto your wood block. And then you use a bit of water to soften the paper and rub the paper away, leaving behind the printed ink. Steph said this technique doesn't work on all different linoleum types, but on this particular wood block it did. Good morning. I'm gonna put contacts in. I have to find where they are. They're not in here. So today, searching. You know where you put contacts. Ah, ta-da! I've already been to the gym. I'm waiting until my best friend Ellen gets out of work. Ugh. And then we're gonna, I'm gonna meet up with her and we're gonna drive to a dick blick. I think it might just be called blick now. They decide not to use the word dick anymore. No. I liked that part. That part was fun. That was very funny. Oh, okay, the other one's in. Again, over here on non-textured paper in the same way. And while it didn't show up all the little bits, it did the, do the same thing again. And I like really, I like really pushed down. You can see. Wow, the spoon print turned out amazing. I know we want clean prints, but the texture that you get from printing that it's just so cool. I don't know how much of this paper I'm supposed to remove. I'm kind of just gonna go for it. See how it goes. I tried to draw a yellow circle in the background. I even made a cross hatch on the back. Oh, she's doing such a good job. I'm gonna fill in the areas of the paper that I just completely wiped off. Oh God, excuse me, sorry, I'm just so bubbly right now. I don't know if this is a beginner friendly technique. It might not be. I know it's not a Brin friendly technique. How cool that one looks with the color. Also still trying to center that. 
So one of the things that Steph said to me was make sure that it's completely dry before adding water and then wait for it to dry again before carving. And she recommended using a hair dryer, which I purchased because I didn't own one before. I love tools. Work. Let's go! <laughs> Sorry, I hated everything about what I just did. And that I did, um, because that's only two colors. In a minute, I'm gonna need a sentimental man or woman to pump me up. Camera's really low. So I've uh, made a couple of cuts and I have already cut my hands because I was holding it like this. I'm gonna give you some tips on how to cut your linoleum. Tips that everyone has told me, but I'm not listening. But I'll tell you so that you don't listen to me. You won't listen to me the same way I don't listen to no nobody. So you're supposed to heat up your block. That's what I've been told. And uh, I haven't done that yet. Next, never, never, never put your hands in front of where your blade is gonna jut out. I have already bled this morning. Oh, that was a chunk. Oh, what other tips can I give you? I've been doing this for no time, but I can, I'll, te I'll teach you all the tricks. Uh-oh, my finger was in front of the blade again. Oh, I think a good tip, see what's going on here? I was cutting down into my shape. Always cut away from your shape. No one told me that, but that's a tip that I just, you can have that one for free. Oh, God damn. Oh, no. I was talking to Sarah this morning and we were discussing the concept of process art versus progress art. This is process art. This is all about the process. That ultimately at the very end, it all comes together and it's very, very cool, but you can't really see it as it's happening. You have to enjoy just the act of carving. I hate stuff like this. <laughs> this is not my bag, baby. However, I'm really liking it right now because it's brand new. I'm honestly having the most fun. How do I hold my block? So I've got her outlined at this point, cut out on the outlines and I thought of more, more tips to tell you. The pink stuff is so much easier. <laughs> Another tip I have is to get a two pack of these carving knives. You don't have to be swapping out tops all the time. Am I just lazy or I hate swapping out the tops, man. It's driving me crazy. I'm having an absolute blast. I am enjoying this so much. So I don't have any ink yet, so I can't make any test prints. Oh, I almost, Made a big boo-boo. I'm going to the store tonight and I will pick some up. We're on our way to Dick Blick. But it's just Blick now. Did you see that? Did it used to be Dick? I think they dropped the Dick. I don't think it was ever. I think it was Dick at one time. Not anymore, though. I'm truly just heartbroken that you love the name Guardians over the I name Spiders. I just think it's a good, I'm not saying over the name Spiders. Realistically, they weren't going to go with the Spiders, which in Brin's universe would be the best name. Yeah, obviously I want. But all I'm saying is because they can't do that, like why can't they name them the spiders? That's ridiculous. No, what? It's by whose standards? It's by so <laughs> what? Okay, put that on the timer. Put that as a check mark of times Ellen was wrong. What? Ding! What? Which one? This Ding! Time? I don't know. And my soul will die. <laughs> no, about the spider thing. <laughs> about the spider thing. You can get um, water soluble oil based so you don't have to clean it with oils. But you can clean it with like soap and water. That. I am the professional here. We've got the babies all buckled in back oh, there. Oh, no, no, I didn't. I probably should though. What if we get in a car accident? I'll drive so safe. <sighs>
We have to because those were expensive. I feel like we <laughs> have two little babies back there now. Comment down below how much you think Bryn spent just How now. much do you think I just spent at Dick Blake? There's no reward for it. But you don't earn it. You don't win anything. There's just one loser and it's me. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So while Ellen takes us to dinner, I'm going to show you some of her artwork. Aww. Modern ritual. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. where I got my piercing. Yes, they gave us free stickers. So I took them because they gave them to us, not because I stole them. Ellen steals. <laughs> this this was your favorite one? Maybe. It is really, really beautiful. Do you not have a one? Oh. <gasps> Sorry. <laughs> 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 I got him. What if we get in a car accident? I'll drive. Put that in, as a check mark of times Ellen was wrong. Do a very very quick haul of what we got at Big Blick yesterday. First, I want to show you the paper I got. We need to bag your bitch like groceries. The person that was checking us out was like, "How butt hurt will you get if your paper gets a little bit crinkled?" And I was like, "Not at all." And now I'm like, "This got ruined." I don't know if you can fully appreciate how cool these papers are, but they are gorgeous. And they're thin. They all have this like beautiful deckled edge. Can you see the transparency when I hold these two up like this? I don't know. We went nuts. It was stupid. So I have all this beautiful paper. I think that I'll try to make a couple of prints using this nice paper today. I got a bunch of this easy cut lino because Ellen was with me and she knows a ton about printmaking. Anyways, I got a bunch of this crap. It was mad cheap. I think that these were like four bucks each. This thing of Speedy Carve that I bought from Michaels, this was 20 bucks. Then Ellen said she'd heard good things about this brand. This red, I don't like it. It's just not orangey enough, in my opinion. This yellow, though, slaps. I bought this Professional Relief Speedball ink. This is oil-based. This is this one in particular is water miscible, which means that I can clean it off of my tools with water. <gasps> ah, why am I doing this on my new fancy paper? Ah, I'm so stupid, I don't deserve nice things. Got a bunch of new colored pencils. Wait, these are these are four eighty five a piece. I didn't know that. I just was grabbing things and putting them in my basket. Don't ever pick up a basket in an art supply store. Only carry around with your hands. That's the number one rule. No baskets. Never baskets. Anyways, I bought a bunch of them. I'm really excited. They're really cool. I know that this was a last minute decision at checkout because there was a little bin of them. I bought a glittery pencil. It just was really pretty and I just liked how chubby it was and I wanted it. Oh. This was like a buck fifty. What a deal! All right, guys, we are officially gonna make our first print. I've got my brayer. This is actually shrinky dink to roll my ink onto. I've got my twenty-three dollar ink, my block, and my spanking spoon. So I started printing with my block and honestly, the first couple of prints turned out really impressive in my opinion. However, I started to wash my block and then leave it in the sun to dry rapidly. And I did this over and over again <laughs> for some reason. And naturally the wood fiber board started to warp and my prints started becoming really uneven, which was super disheartening. With lino printing, it just, it kind of sucks that you can work so hard to make the block and then the prints don't look good. Like there's effort and the potential to like completely biff it every step of the way with lino. L lino, lino, there is a potential for failure every step of the way. It's very challenging. And to me, I feel like the reward isn't there because the prints aren't, I'm not getting, I'm not getting perfect prints. It's driving me crazy. Maybe I need to switch it up and, and try um, something rubber that doesn't, that can't warp. I just feel really discouraged right now. I'm wearing my relaxation shirt because I just like, I couldn't deal. Also, it's so hot and also windy. So I have to close the doors. Otherwise it blows all my papers around and just gets ink everywhere. So it's just really hot in here. 
I got really, really hot and then I changed into this shirt and I'm not wearing pants. It's very sweaty in here right now. But I'm gonna share with you some of the things that I've learned today. Cause I feel like I learned a lot. One is that there's no amount of whatever this is called burnishing. I don't even know. That is enough. You could do this for a thousand years. It, it'll never be enough. And you would think that if you do this too much, it would like press the ink and like make it like splosh out or like splay or some other word where it just like, it doesn't look good, but no. Nah. Freaking perfect. Perfect, 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 perfect. Look how cool that one is. I put up a poll on Instagram to see like, do people like the red ink or the black ink? And overwhelmingly everyone prefers black, which I understand, but also you're wrong. So just like surrounded by my prints and Poe. And I'm having a really good time. Now I feel like I've got my relaxation shirt on. I'm trying to chill out, trying to just have fun with it. And it's like, once I took the pressure off, once I took the overalls off, it's too damn hot for overalls. After that happened, it was like, huh, I guess I'll just like muck around. I think like not having, I think having spent money on really nice paper also put a lot of pressure to make sure that I was making really good prints. But I think that if I were buying handmade prints from an artist, having like, there's a print that Ellen made for me and there's like a finger smudge on it and it's my favorite one. So looking back, I'd say that this day switching into my relaxation shirt, I know I keep saying that, was a huge turning point for me in this project. All of a sudden, it's almost as if I recognized the pressure I was putting on myself to have perfect prints. And once I sort of let go of perfection as the goal, acknowledging that the beauty of lino printing is that it is not computer printing. Having it look handmade is the beauty of printmaking. I started to really get into a groove. I even made a new carving of a narwhal using the gray rubber easy cut material and I discovered that is what you should use. Do not use the block. This is really when the project started to become a lot more fun for me. This is also around the time that I had a TikTok for the goblin lino print kind of blow up and get a hundred thousand views. There was a lot of interest in that piece and I knew that I couldn't make enough prints with my warped block so I I carved a new block using the gray stuff and the prints came out so much nicer. I think I'm making a huge mistake. Yeah, maybe don't cut up a bunch of handmade beautiful paper with your pizza hands. I was yours for the taking. Guess I needed a home. But if I'm not mistaken, you were good on your own. Oh, and I know I know I was drunk enough. Didn't know the week. I don't know how many prints I sold. I sold whatever I put in my shop because the TikTok video blew up. It felt really, really wonderful that so many people were supportive of my goblin drawing. It felt like a big departure from my normal work and to have people appreciate it meant so much. So I just want to genuinely say thank you so much. Oh, hey. You made it to the outro. I picked up a $20 hammock on Amazon. I've been uh, editing this video while hanging out in a hammock and it has been spicy meatball. Mm, feels so good, I love this day. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. This printmaking week was incredible. I loved waking up. Am I gonna make anyone dizzy? Should I? Don't think about it. Don't think about the fact that we're swaying back and forth. I feel like I got over my fear of imperfection a little bit. Not really, but a little bit. Just It was just really, really great. Plus, wanna know something dope? Slam dunking? Wanna know something fun? Sure you do! I'm getting the goblin design made in two shirts. Ah, I'm so excited. I sent in the order today. I've heard that there are supply chain issues with everything. Well, we know this, but 
with, I guess, shirt making too. Now's the part where I thank everybody in my acceptance speech award ceremony style. It's important that I thank the women that helped me get through this week, like Sarah, who is with me every step of the way. She did her own lino printing. My best friend, Ellen, who came over and like physically held my hand, helping me print. Steph from Cheers Thanks A Lot, who offered me some really clutch advice when I was honestly really close to having a temper tantrum. And then the printmaking community in general. I know I mentioned that my TikTok ended up getting like 100,000 plus views, and it did. But what's cool about it was how many people left a comment going like, welcome to the printmaking community. And it was just so sweet. I loved it. That's the end of the video. Personally, I would love it if you would leave a comment letting me know what you what project you want to work on i feel like we got to the end of the video and i can lay down now <laughs> no but for real leave me a comment and let me know what project you want to try but maybe you haven't made time for it yet but it's something that you'd really like to do in 2022 my skin is looking glowy mm, Bryn, stop you can't oh the camera can't handle it all right i'll see you guys in the next video and thank you so much for watching and i love you so much now i'm truly awakened up Say you wanna talk